Welcome to Desire. We sip tea on a lush plantation in Sri Lanka and drink in one of the most exclusive collection of vintage supercars. We take a trip to the designer dentist who promises we won't feel a thing. Just in case, the world's most expensive bottle of tequila will be on hand to numb the pain. But first, since its humble beginnings as a fancy goods store in 1837, Tiffany & Co has grown into the most famous jewellery designer and seller in the world. The name has become synonymous with glamour and quality. Bejeweled by Tiffany features 180 pieces from the official archives, as well as jewels on loan from private owners. The first impact, I think, is, is I hope, the flag brooch, this wonderful rippling flag in rubies, sapphires and diamonds. Um, with 13 stars and stripes, the original Union flag. Really celebrating the patriotism and the fact that this is a very American story. Charles Tiffany was a great patriot. We can see here his involvement. Um, here we have one of the presentation swords at the end of the Civil War, made by Tiffany's workshops. During the Civil War, Ameri Ameri the Union side had been supplied by Tiffany with military equipment from Tiffany's great network of contacts in Europe. And here, really summing up the essence of, the, of Charles Tiffany and his entrepreneurial spirit. Here, his cameo on a brooch um, of the late 19th century. And beneath that, the first mail order catalogue in the world. In 1845, Tiffany produced this wonderful catalogue where if you were living out in the back of beyond, you could order luxuries and fancy goods from Tiffany & Co. Because, of course, they started not as jewellers, but selling fancy goods and jewellery. Part of Tiffany's success is owed to Charles Tiffany's genius at marketing. He introduced mail order sales, producing the first ever mail order catalogue. However, the company didn't just stay ahead with shrewd publicity, but by keeping itself out on the cutting edge creatively. Um, Tiffany caused a sensation with this series of jewelled orchids. We have seven of them here. But in fact, in the original display, there were 24 different species of orchids, many of which were recent discoveries. The yellow one here was only discovered in the tropics a few years before Tiffany is here recreating it in gold and enamel and, and gemstones. Far from being random creations on display, Phillips explains the importance of displaying the collection as a whole. This Tiffany collection um, is a, a sumptuous array. It, it covers the, the diamond set and the, the wonderful diamond set jewellery going right back through the 19th century. Also the very colourful stones and the American gemstones which Tiffany was particularly keen on using. Um, it comes right up to almost to the present day. It's an amazing archive collection. Um, the wonderful thing about it being part of the Tiffany & Co archive collection is that you often have the original designs that you can compare with the pieces that have survived and so it makes a very full archive to have things right through from the drawing board to the completed work. Some other very sparkling accessories have been on display at luxury department store Harrods in London. Designed by Stuart Weitzman, the $1 million shoes are woven from platinum thread, in the same way that royal clothing was made out of gold thread centuries ago. The diamonds from Quiet Diamonds are set in pure platinum and total over 65 carats. There are 464 diamonds used in total, with two large diamonds in the centre of each shoe. One large round stone weighing 1.5 carats and a pear-shaped 5-carat stone. Proceeds are going to charity. A lot of people come through this store in any given day who would have the sort of finances that actually they could purchase this shoe. It may be someone who likes jewellery, it may be someone who's a collector of unique items. We just don't know, but uh, we've got two weeks to sell them and hopefully in that time uh, we may get somebody to part with a million dollars. Because of their value, the shoes were under round-the-clock guard during their whole stay. There will be a member of security guarding the shoes uh, every day between 10 o'clock and 7 o'clock when they're on show. And then in the evening they'll be taken down to our vaults, locked away for the evening and then uh, brought up again and displayed again in the morning. 
Stuart Weitzman began designing shoes for his father's business in the early 1960s and is internationally renowned for his exclusive designs. His trademark uses of unique materials such as cork, vinyl, loose sight wallpaper and gold have helped him build his footwear company into an empire with outlets in 45 countries from France to the West Indies and Japan. The shoes were made in size 38 but the customer who purchases the shoes will be able to have them altered to the perfect fit. And for those who can't afford quite such an extravagant price tag, there is a rather less expensive option. The $250 rhinestone version is also on sale. Louis Vuitton one week, Prada the next. Designer handbags may be appealing, but they don't come cheap especially if you never like to be seen out with the same bag twice. The German company Luxus Babe, which translates as Luxury Babe, is changing all that, allowing customers to rent designer handbags. The company is the brainchild of Micah Sanger, who set up the firm on discovering that US-based online handbag rental services wouldn't deliver to Germany. I myself am addicted to handbags and last year I read in an American women's magazine that this was totally normal, being able to rent designer handbags. So I immediately went to the internet site but they told me they wouldn't ship bags to Germany and was completely devastated. So I came up with this idea. Sanger soon discovered there were plenty of other women who shared her obsession. Luxus Babe's minimum contract lasts three months and has three levels of monthly subscriptions, ranging from $37 to $100 US dollars. Customers then get to choose their favorite bag from the selection available. The designer bags are ordered online and delivered to the customer's door. One woman client called me and told me her husband showed her an article about Luxus Babe. So it was kind of in his interest to give a subscription to his wife. Luxus Babe has introduced customer Sophia Schmidt to online shopping. She's never bought anything on the internet before. I just like designer handbags because they're made of real leather and because not everyone has them. According to Sanger, their online shop gives customers the chance to look like a million dollars without having to spend it. Subscribers can swap their bags as often as they like. There's a demand for established designers, but also for up-and-coming designers. We offer the Babe and the Luxury Babe subscriptions, which are most often sold. With the Babe subscription, its young designers Luxus Babe includes Gucci, Dior, Fendi and so on. Anna Sanger says, there's nothing like the real thing. Coming up next, tea straight from the plantation. With its stunning views over Sri Lanka's rolling green tea hills, the Norwood Plantation Manager's Bungalow was designed to compensate for the loneliness of British tea planters living far from their families. The plantation remains, but after a massive refurbishment, the bungalow and several others are now at the heart of a scheme to woo some of the world's highest spending tourists who want a few quiet days sampling the colonial tea estate life. i uh, really interested in the, the scenery we have here, um, particularly interested in staying on a tea plantation. Uh, the images of tea plucks is something I've grown up with since being a, a young boy, but the images on the PG tips. And um, we're particularly interested in staying in a colonial style bungalow, um, trying to get a taste of that lifestyle. With polished wooden beds draped in mosquito nets, colonial-style furniture, gourmet food and swimming pools, the luxury does not come cheap. A room will set you back $300 a night or $500 for one of the suites, an all-inclusive deal that comes with all the gourmet food and drink a guest could desire. And we thought Sri Lanka had a great combination of 
beautiful country landscapes, flora and fauna, the beaches, the culture, the cuisine, the people. So we thought this would be a really great choice. And so far, we've been proved right. We've had a fantastic time. Guests can tour the tea factories that dry, cut and process the tea leaves for shipment to auction and talk through the industry with the resort's planter in residence, someone with a deep and long experience of the industry. Tea Trails says demand is rising steadily, particularly among honeymoon couples. I think the primary reason that they come here is because of the British colonial uh, feel that these bungalows have, mainly because these are originally put up by the British who were here doing the tea plantations. And also, let's say the tea country. I mean, all, most of the tourists who come here, they do a tea tour as well, a tea experience or a tea, or a tea factory and a tea estate visit. The firm says it's likely to take seven years to pay off the investment taken to refurbish the bungalows. But with such high potential, other tea firms are looking at converting some of their own bungalows for high-end tourism. A hundred kilometers west of the capital Colombo, the cooler, wetter tea hills are already one of the key tourist destinations in Sri Lanka. Since most tourists, about 40% of those tourists who arrive to Sri Lanka, arrive in Sri Lanka going to the hill country, we thought of creating a new area in the hill country to be positioned as the destination of choice for upmarket tourists. And after having done extensive research, we picked the Bogontalava region as the most suitable area for tourism and created these uh, bungalows. Some guests at the bungalows have found the only drawback to be the long, tortuous road journey from the capital, and so have simply booked a helicopter at the cost of several thousand dollars. But the company hopes Sri Lankan Airlines will soon start a seaplane service from Colombo to a nearby reservoir, just in time for tea. Sitting in a dock at Southampton in England, Britain's newest and largest cruise liner, the Arcadia. The giant 83,000 ton vessel has cost over 200 million pounds to build. On board, it's been designed with middle-aged, well-to-do adults in mind. We're aiming here at people in their 40s to 50s, um, principally couples um, whose children are perhaps not uh, holidaying with them um, any longer and who want to sort of remind themselves that they're still young and they want to do sort of, you know, younger, more active things and what we call lifestyle pursuits. To meet the demands of this market, special shows by the Cirque d'Arcadia will also be performed on board. Elsewhere, there's a chance to unwind with massages, or even lie back and relax as you cruise into the sunset. Three million pounds has also been spent on special artwork, designed to enhance the cruising experience, including two bejeweled cosmic egg sculptures. With this work, you can either just look at it and say, oh, it's a fabulous jewel, it sparkles, it's wonderful, and take it to that and just a little, even just bring a smile to somebody's face would be wonderful. But if you want to go deeper, you can begin to look into the galaxies and see all the primordial oceans in between, and, and there's a lot of depth into it as well. And to satisfy the culinary desires of passengers, British celebrity chef Gary Rhodes has his own restaurant on board, giving his signature dishes a new dimension. I've got some of some great old little favourites, but with a new twist about them. So everybody's going to feel comfortable um, recognising, you know, they'll read the menu and think, oh yes, I could really eat that. But when they get it, they're going to realise that a little bit more work has gone into it. With the luxury of a child-free environment, it's hoped travellers on Arcadia will experience the very best that cruising has to offer. Once back on dry land, you'll need something to get around in. And what better place to go shopping for the creme de la creme of motoring than the very exclusive supercar show. In the splendid grounds of one of London's most exclusive clubs sit some of the most expensive cars that money can buy. As part of a new concept called Salon Privé, these dream cars, such as the Koenigsegg CCX and Bentley GTC, are displayed in all their glory for a select number of private buyers to scrutinize and purchase. It may be a motor show, but it feels more like an upmarket garden party. 
purpose of the event is to provide manufacturers of exclusive cars with an opportunity to display the cars in an open environment to people who are either very passionate about them or have the potential, the, the circumstances, you know, to the ability to buy them. So rather than having the cars simply on display at general motor shows as a, as a, as a pull, if you like, for, for visitors, the purpose really of here is to provide the limited number of supercar manufacturers with an opportunity to meet a limited number of people in a private environment without the crowds and, and everything else. The cars on sale here are the very latest models with state-of-the-art technology, like this slick Lamborghini Spire with its electric roof. However, even for the super-rich, there are a few downsides, as many of these cars have waiting lists of up to a year, even if you pay the full price on the spot. A supercar show like Salon Privé London um, will work because of the many rich people who live in London. Uh, it has one of the highest concentrations of billionaires in the world. And also because uh, the supercar market tends to be relatively inflation proof. Uh, when you're looking at cars like the Bugatti Veyron, which is a million euros or 800,000 pounds, the people who afford that tend not to be subject to the vagaries of the economy like ordinary working people. This four-day event has plenty to amuse the visitor, such as the UK launch of two new models from Marcos, along with a celebrity cricket match and charity dinner, making it a real society event. The organisers hope that the success of the show will make it an annual event and are looking to expand the concept to other desirable destinations around the world. Coming up, the ultimate in dental care. A Berlin dentist has recently opened the German capital's hippest designer practice and his patients swear even the treatment hurts less here. Perhaps it's because the orange landscape with burgundy coloured seats makes the waiting room look more like an airport lounge. You don't get the impression of being at the dentist's, at least when you enter. The reception reminds me more of a hotel lobby than a dentist's practice. It's really very pleasant, and not this usual sterility of a doctor's environment. It doesn't even smell of antiseptics. Very pleasant. Dentist Stefan Siegler decided to put the 1.5 million euro investment into the hands of internationally acclaimed German architects, Wolfram Putz and Thomas Willemite of Graft Architects, who have offices in Berlin, Beijing and Los Angeles. And patients in this affluent part of Berlin seem to agree that the new concept eases at least some of the pain of a visit to the dentist. Sure, it hurts a little, but less than elsewhere, because I have less fear here. The atmosphere is very soothing. The central motivation behind Graft Architects is the hunger for the new idea, the hunger for the complete difference. And rather than advancing a particular ideology or aesthetic, the firm takes a cross-cultural, freestyle, multi-perspective approach and has found success in many forms of open-ended collaboration. The original plan was to create a sort of dune landscape to include the treatment rooms. So far nobody noticed that, but it still works well, because there is another effect. People feel comfortable because of the colours. Orange is a good mood colour and above all, when you enter, it doesn't have this typical dental practice atmosphere. A lot of people who came the first time asked, am I right here? Is this a restaurant? Where's the dental practice? That's a question we love to hear. 
What I liked is that the architects so far had not built a dental practice. They worked for the restaurant and hotel business. And this combination of catering, hotel business and dental practice I found really appealing. The transurban architecture firm has been grafting art onto architecture, living spaces, working spaces, studios and party venues to huge acclaim. In just five years, they've earned the respect of some influential art world figures and attracted celebrity clients like Brad Pitt and Will Smith. They're currently designing a California beach retreat for Pitt, who they view as an equal partner in the design process. Putz describes their collaborative meetings as jam sessions. Ideas are shared freely and responsibility for specific design elements is impossible to discern. Thomas Philomite says that people from the film world are very good at dealing with prescribed atmospheres. And he's also welcomed the challenge of working in a clinical environment. Die Ansprüche sind einerseits gestiegen auf der Patientenseite und andererseits gibt es einen gesunden, sich entwickelnden Patients' requirements have increased. Den man schon spüren kann. And at the same time, there's a healthy competition among doctors. Das ist eine Art Trend. I'm confident that there will be a trend. Whatever it might look like. Aber das ist sehr außergewöhnlich. I can't really say so far, but I'm sure there will be some very extravagant places in the future. Kann davon ist auszugehen. And if the dentist's bill is a bit hard to swallow, how about this? Forget about the kind of tequila you slam down on the bar or knock back at parties in throat-burning shots with salt and lemon. If you're paying six figures, you might prefer to savour it in small sips. This is an impossibly upmarket brand of tequila, 100% blue argave, lovingly aged for six years and sold in a limited edition platinum bottle, with fancy artwork on the label. It went on sale in Mexico for 225,000 US dollars a bottle. There are 55 craftsmen working on this project, of which I got to be the leader. It's my responsibility to fund the project, and luckily the three displayed bottles are already sold, and will travel later today to United States Collector. It's an honor to place our national drink in the highest ranks. Tequila Lay.925 has produced 66 bottles of the Pasión Azteca tequila, half of them pure platinum bottles and half of them gold and platinum decorated bottles that sell for the slightly less extravagant price of 150,000 US dollars. For those on a smaller budget, there are 999 bottles of the same tequila in silver and gold bottles, priced at just 25,000 dollars. Next time on Desire, we dress up for breakfast at Tiffany's and to rub shoulders with A-listers at the Governor's Ball. We sit down at the world's most expensive table and take a front row seat for Louis Vuitton before driving off in a vintage Bugatti.